I thought I'd do a picture of um, dark more today, somewhere I'd like to go pretty soon. Do some plain air painting. I do like the moors. This is just clean water going on to um, your Fabriano, 130 pound, 15 by 11. And just a little bit of raw sienna, not a lot. Just some of there in the background. Clean the brush. And then I'm going to go Payne's Grey, so the ultramarine first and then Payne's Grey. really dark dark bluey colour. I'm going to come in from this side and in from the other. Same again. Using the same colours. In fact, now what I'm going to do is add a quick dry. Doesn't have to be bone dry. Same two colours, maybe even a touch of the uh, raw sienna as well. And let's put the, uh, the high land on. This is the most distant land there is. Doing off something like that. Bring in a bit of raw sienna as it comes down. Remember, at this far distance, I'm just using sky colours. Uh, actually, as I say that, I went into the lemon yellow by mistake, but. I think we might have come just far enough forward actually to go into the lemon yellow so as it gets a little bit green because obviously the, as you're using the sky colours it pushes it right back into the distance and then you sort of warm it up as you get closer and closer into the foreground. So I'm just sort of flicking between all the sky colours now. Get the most distant land in. So that's about the most distant land there. Next, one of the big rocks that feature in these areas on the tours. I'm just giving, just adding a bit of burnt umber to the old thing. Same colours, a bit of burnt umber, just to really sort of darken it. In fact, now what I'll do first. slightly just so that this stands out a little bit better a bit more water it's not coming off the brush very well so it needs to be a bit wetter and you've got a rock there I'm going to clean the brush and I'm going back to light raw sienna underneath that and we've got a different plane there and this one's more green, this is in the foreground there, in front of all this distant land. It's coming across there like that. Really running this up there. Pain's grow, a bit of pain's grow to that. Just weave that across like that. So you've got the distant land and then the middle ground now with our rocks on the top there, across there. And then before we move right into the foreground, let's just whack a bit of that in. Some more rocks here, but I want to make it sound a bit dry. Paper stretch slightly, so I'm just going to pull it flat. 
I'm not quite sure where I did that. I did that with some, but I don't know where I did that. Um, I caught it with my fingernail or something. Um, right, another rock here. A bit more water. Into these dark colours. Sort of predominantly burnt umber, ultramarine, pines grey. And you're sort of looking for a sort of leaning towards blue, grey, rocky colour. And that's the top of that's coming up about something like so. And the rocks are coming down there and across there like that. And then where the where the sun is just catching it across the top there, a few little highlights. And it's a bit lighter as well along there. And just a bit along there as well. Just where the sort of sunlight's catching as it's coming down. There then. Back to lighter colours, so we need to clean the brush because it's all dark. Let's go back into that raw sienna. Let's try and get a bit different, need a bit some sort of contrast with this. Let's just make that a bit darker, sort of a darker green. Just see, just to change the uh, get a different plane on it, another layer. But now I've got that sort of profile of the of the foreground in now, I can go back to light. Just turn my tissue, me tea towel around so it's nice and dry, it's getting a bit wet. Bit of green. Maybe a bit of light red as well, just to get that nice sort of change. Yeah, just some nice greeny colours, lemon yellow, ultramarine, you know, up there. All that little bit of red. You don't even want a touch of the red because it's such a strong, strong colour. And then into the foreground, let's just go with a really strong green. Lemon yellow, ultramarine, a bit of Payne's grey. Nice dark green. Fill that corner in a bit better. Again. Got a quick dry. There we go. A few little tufts, little tufts of grass and stuff. The grass growing here and there. A few more up there. A few on this profile line there. Even uh, maybe with your finger now just to. Whack a few in here and there. Switch the rigger, pop a few more in. Sort of darky green colour, lemon yellow, Payne's grey. A few more little tufts. A bit more water, it's not coming off very well. Generally need plenty of water with the rig because there's so few hairs on it.
licking with the rigger. Just have a couple of little birds right in the sunlight. That's just a nice simple little dark moor scene. Have a closer look at it. This is what our painting looks like with the main sun. As usual, put the sky in first. This time, before I put the distant land in, I dried it a little bit. And you can see the reason behind this was so you get these sort of sharp profile, and then it sort of gets lost there amongst the sky. It could be like sort of misty hills or whatever. But then you see this sort of sharp edge to the distant land and then it sort of gets lost again amongst the clouds and whatnot. And we'll see these little sort of unpainted bits of paper that sort of sparkling. It could be like sunlight reflecting off, off roofs of houses or buildings or things like that. I moved into the middle ground putting these rocks in and then just tried to change again you can see putting that distant land the same colour as the sky pushes it right back and then we come forward into the middle ground with sort of lighter warmer colours going all the way across and then closer still right into the foreground got a big rock here bit of a uh, card work picking out a few highlights on the rock and again a few bits of grass and stuff Putting another layer in. So you can see you've predominantly sort of got one, two, three layers in the landscape. Also adding a little bit of red in the foreground just to really warm it up. A little bit of finger scratching there to create a few grasses. A few more grasses put in with the rigger. Well thanks for watching, I hope you like that. Keep practicing, any questions please ask. And I'll see you again soon.